Welcome, everyone. That's a kind, gentle way to say, come on, let's get this party started. If you would kindly take your seats as we are going to begin our program right now, promptly at 12, so that each and every one in the room who's so delighted to see friends they haven't seen or to greet and to acknowledge the people at their table, but we would kindly love to have your complete attention as we begin our program. If you could draw your attention to the stage, let's begin our program, shall we? Thank you, everyone. That's Mr. Tom West, Thomas West on keyboards. Give him a round of applause. Hey, everybody, my name is T. Michael Rambo, and I will be your host this afternoon. And welcome to the Family Partnerships Better Together Luncheon. And I'm here because I passionately believe, I truly believe in this life-changing work that the Family Partnership does and continues to do. Now, after two years, that's right, two years of virtual programs and unlimited Zoom meetings and, and those things, we are finally... Woo! Together, in person. Come on, let's hear it for that. Whoa! <laughs> Yeehaw! To express that togetherness, we will open by reciting a poem that you will find at your place settings. If you kindly lift it, it's, on, it's in blue, which is no coincidence. It is in blue. And as we read it together, this poem gives thanks and acknowledges the language, traditions, and contributions of the Dakota, Anishinaabe, and other tribal nations, past and present, whose land we are standing on today. Now, I'd like to ask and invite each of you, if you'd kindly read from your, that at your place setting or at the screens to my left and to your right, we'll read the poem entitled, We Give Thanks for Things, We Give Thanks to Others as you have that in your hand, or if you choose to read from the screen, we'd love to invite you to read along with us. And the poem reads, Today, we give thanks for our many blessings. We give thanks for the sky above and the earth below. We give thanks for the rising of the sun and the moon. We give thanks for the beauty of our surroundings. We give thanks for our parents who brought us into the world and taught us about life. We give thanks for our brothers and sisters who shared our childhood with us. We give thanks for our friends who have journeyed along life's path with us. We give thanks for the laughter of children and we give thanks for the love in our hearts. Ashe. To lead us into our meal, I'd like to ask that you please welcome, and I'll kindly invite her to the stage. Come on up. <laughs> Lorena Neville, Vice President of Programs for the Family Partnership. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. As you registered or arrived today, we ask you to share one word that captures your hope for your family and for your community. We put your words on screen. A few that resonated with me are fearless, equity, safety. We asked our families the same question and would like to share some of their voices of hope for the future. Several mention the need for assistance. I hope not to struggle. I hope to get stable housing. I hope programs like yours remain available to the community as I see the need daily. Parents wrote, my hopes are for my son to grow up with a strong sense of self, pride in his cultural identity, and to feel loved and supported to explore the world. For my child to learn and to be independent in her future. I hope to be a better parent to my sons. 
I hope to be a solid, loving, and happy family. And lastly, I hope to be a support supportive community again and to participate in activities in person with friends and family, just like we are doing here today. A lot has changed since we were last together. And it's not just our clients who have suffered from a lack of connection. To take, kick off the conversation over lunch, we are asking that you share your word for hope and what you love about the Twin Cities. Our program will resume in just a few minutes with a short video about the family partnership. Enjoy your lunch. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. Welcome back to that funny place we all laughed about. Welcome back, everyone. Our program is about to begin again. We'd like to thank our Metropolitan and all our servers. Let's give them a big round of applause, shall we? They've been so gracious and so very kind. At this time, I'd like to ask you to please and draw your attention to the screens to my left and to my right and listen to an important video message about the family partnership. Our mission at the Family Partnership is building strong families, vital communities, and better futures for children. More than 90% of the families we serve live at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. Many experience the effects of adversity, trauma, and systemic racism that impact their family's health and well being and are passed from one generation to the next. When kids are exposed to adverse childhood experiences, the impact of child neglect, child abuse, and household dysfunction creates toxic stress, wiring the brain in a fight or flight response. This impairs healthy brain development and the executive functioning skills needed to succeed in school and life. We provide early intervention with families using a two-generation or whole family approach with brain science informed and evidence-based tools. Our holistic services represent the five gears identified by the Aspen Institute for two-gen impact. Accessing more gears helps families move to prosperity. Our early education and therapeutic interventions set up kids for success. We offer children, youth, and adults access to mental health therapy so they can heal. We educate and empower parents to build skills to strengthen their child's development. We provide support and advocacy for those experiencing commercial sexual exploitation so they can envision a new life. And our mobility coaches help families to achieve goals for education and increased income. We are intentionally located in North and in South Minneapolis, where families need access to our services the most. We partner with families to remove barriers and tap into their resilient strengths to clear the path for family success. Yes, as the video explained, clearing the pathway to family success. The Family Partnership is here to provide early intervention so that families can build better, stronger, brighter futures. But the Family Partnership is also there when people need support, whether it's mental health therapy or living in a bad situation like domestic violence or being involved with sex trafficking an issue that the Family Partnership Pride program addresses. Today, we would like to share a story of one of the many people who have experienced the benefits of the Pride program.
I joined Grindr to meet people, um, other people in the gay community where I had just moved. I met a few people and one guy was genuinely nice. He invited me out to different parties and introduced me to other people. I wasn't looking for a hookup. I felt like we were building a real friendship. At first, the parties were fun and something that I enjoyed. I met his friends, and I felt like we all got along well. Then uh, he took me to one party and offered me a drink as soon as we arrived. I only remember having the one drink, and the next thing I knew, I was waking up in a bedroom in pain, and I didn't know why. I thought, well, we were drinking, and maybe I had too much to drink. The next time I hung out with this friend, the same thing happened. I accepted a drink, I blacked out, and I woke up in a bedroom in pain. Another confusing thing was that uh, people were giving money to my friend as we were leaving, and I wasn't sure why. After this happened a few more times, I decided to only drink water. But the same thing happened. I finally went to see a doctor, and they found drugs in my system. That's when I realized I was being drugged at these parties, and I had been sexually assaulted. That's when I realized my friend was making money off of letting people have sex with me while I was drugged. I tried to distance myself from my friend um, by blocking him, deleting his number, and even moving out of state. But Everywhere I went, he found me. Um, after he got a hold of me, he asked me to go to one more party with him. And when I said no, he told me he would post pictures and videos of me on social media, showing the things that had happened to me at the previous parties. So I ended up going with him because I was afraid of having those things on the internet. After that party, I threw my phone away because I learned that he had installed a tracking system. And I moved again to Minnesota. I asked agencies for help, but many either did not believe my story or they couldn't help as their programs only serve women. From word of mouth, I learned about the Family Partnerships Pride program and that they help everyone who has experienced sexual exploitation and it didn't matter that I'm a man or that I'm gay. When I started working with Pride, they listened to me. And they not only believed me, they believed in me. I attend the Pride support groups weekly, and they have even helped with transportation so I can meet them in a safe and secure place. My case manager has helped me set goals, and I have been able to achieve some of them. More than anything, I, I'm, I'm proud of myself because I've done things that I didn't think that I could do. I found safe housing, I have a full-time job, and even a savings account. I finally feel like I'm finding stability again, and I realize now that I matter too. Thank you. We've just heard a powerful story from a young man who shared with us the courage it takes to ask for help. When we think about pride, we think about the pride within our organization and the great work that we take pride in. But we can't help but think about someone that we think so very highly of. That's our president and CEO of the Family Partnership, Please join me in welcoming back to the stage, or to the stage, Molly Greenman. Welcome, Molly. Thank you, T. Michael. First, I, I'd just like to say how wonderful it is to be here in person with everyone. It's, yes, we should all be happy for that. It's such a hopeful experience, and, and even the Metropolitan seems a little brighter than it did three years ago. Really great, uh, refreshing 
place. Um, the story that you just heard is just one example of how TFP puts a face on the people in our community that the rest of us don't see and quite frankly are uncomfortable talking about. And as you just heard, once in the life of sexual exploitation, it's extremely hard to get out. So we've located the family partnership where people can easily access our services. And what's really exciting today is, thanks to support from the city of Minneapolis, we will be expanding our Pride Street outreach even further along Lake Street to West Broadway. <laughs> and hot spots across the city. Because we want to be where people are when they need our help the most. You know, that's really great and powerful what you just shared, Molly. And, you know, I just think about how much it means to have the strong support of the city. Now, this is the first time we've gathered together in person. We said that since COVID and sadly since the, the death of George Floyd. Both events have impacted our community tremendously. And I'm sure it's affected the work of the family partnership. Can you say a little bit more about that? Absolutely, absolutely. What, the, what that means is the family partnership is even more important than ever before. It's obvious that the communities we serve have been impacted more negatively than most in the Twin Cities. And the families that live there have experienced multiple generations of trauma and inequity. We hear from our families their need for safety and more support for their children. So we're actively engaging with our neighbors on both the north and south side to build community and improve health and safety for those who are the most vulnerable. Now, Molly, I'm trying to hold it together, y'all. <laughs> Is it true that after 35 years, join me in this move, <laughs> that you're really retiring? Is that true? Indeed. Well, I want you to know that we need to know from you, you know, that of that 35, 18 years of it has been as president and CEO. Come on now, y'all. <laughs> now, can you provide some perspectives, some updates, and things about what's happening and what's coming up in the future for the Family Partnership? In fact, I can. <laughs> Indeed. So whether you're here for the first time or our returning guest, first of all, I just want to thank you for sharing part of your day with us. And I'd especially like to thank our current and former board members, our sponsors who help underwrite the event, table hosts, and our Champion Society members who provide significant multi-year financial support. And I also want to acknowledge our staff who, despite two years of COVID and community distress, still managed to show up every day for the folks we serve and help them clear the path for success. Yes. They're amazing. And in fact, across our, our, our outcomes are the result of using proven strategies. And in fact, across our programs, we currently use 27 evidence-based practices. And where there are none, the Family Partnership takes the lead by developing new approaches, like our brain science-informed work and the unique two-gen curriculum that we've developed for children and their parents to boost their executive functioning. Our early pilots showed a remarkable increase in self-regulation skills which include um, making good decisions, delaying gratification, and responding flexibly to new situations. With the support of the Harvard Center on the Developing Child, we've now expanded these pilots nationally. And we were honored to receive the Minnesota Council on Nonprofits 2021 Mission Award for Innovation for that work. These uncertain times have increased recogn the rec recognition of the importance of mental health therapy, especially for children. It's, it's in the news every day. 60 Minutes just had a great program on it, by the way. Um, but will we as a state, let alone a country, 
invest in the services that are needed. At the Family Partnership, we've worked to close, close the, uh, hold on, the teleprompter. We've worked to close the teleprompter. <laughs> they told me this could happen. I'm never coming back. No. <laughs> All right, here we go. We've worked to close the funding gap in our outpatient, school-based, and in community-based mental health services, but the cost of care is still out of reach for far too many. So as this is my last Better Together Lunch as CEO, I'll be back as a guest, I'd like to share my thoughts and hopes for our community. Since 1878, the Family Partnership has focused on helping children and families overcome obstacles to success. We've targeted those most vulnerable, children, families living in poverty, and people unseen or seen as less than. But we've also worked to change systems and policies that keep families from succeeding and to level the playing field for all. In the past two years, the Family Partnership has intensified our work on equity, inclusion, and anti-racism, including holding ourselves accountable for organizational change. My hope for the future is that as a community and as a country, we all come together across class, gender, age, and racial divides to rebuild a society where every child, every family, and every generation has the opportunity to succeed. We have the choice, and I ask everyone in this room to step up. Of course, the Family Partnership needs your financial support. That comes later. We also need your voice. And I urge you to contact your elected officials and call upon them to increase investments for early education and care, mental health services, anti-violence, and community safety. You can make a difference. And we must make a difference. And we are better together. Thank you. <laughs> I was living in North Minneapolis when I fell into a state of depression after my best friend and brother were murdered. Shootings were happening everywhere around me. I was anxious and I didn't want to go outside. I didn't feel safe. Then my car broke down. I didn't want to leave my house. I couldn't even get on the bus to go to work. I began to use drugs and alcohol to numb the pain and depression. That led me to losing custody of my two kids. I realized that everyone around me had become a negative influence. They were doing their own thing or the same thing as me. What I needed were people to help me get back on track. Then I was referred to the family partnership. They helped me understand where my anxiety and depression came from. Once I realized I was doing drugs and drinking to deal with my grief, I didn't want to use anymore. It just wasn't me. I just needed a wake-up call. So I enrolled in a chemical dependency treatment program. Maria from the Family Partnership asked me what goals I wanted to accomplish. My first goal was to get a different job, and two weeks later, I got a new job making $5 per hour more. The next goal was to move to a safer location. I was on the Section 8 waiting list and was able to move to a larger three-bedroom, two-bath apartment. It's in a perfect neighborhood, and I feel safe. Now I'm goal-setting all the time. I make a list of goals once a week and knock them all off. My next big goal is to go back to school and major in accounting with a business management minor. Today, I'm looking forward to regaining full custody of my two boys. They are so smart. They are gonna do great things. I'm working hard to keep them from having to go through the things I went through. I want them to just be happy, stay in school, and live their best lives. 
Having someone from the family partnership to talk with and model positive energy helped me apply that same positive energy to my life. I learned that once you start setting goals, you can accomplish anything. <laughs> the power of these two amazing people to share their stories. Diana being able to tell us what it means to have the value of family <laughs> and setting goals, goals that move you towards your greater yet to be. That's delicious. <laughs> I'd like to bring up someone now um, who's going to share some insights to what we're going to be doing next. Mr. Diego Bogart. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> What a wonderful event, everyone. As T. Michael said, my name's Diego Borgert. I grew up in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and now live in Minneapolis. Professionally, I work within investments for a multifamily office, Sawmill Trust Company. A lot of my time is spent thinking about the future and evaluating where opportunities might lie, not just for our generation, but the generations beyond. At the Family Partnership's last luncheon in 2019, I was actually sitting in your chairs, listening intently to the organization's message. And I must say, Molly, you guys did an amazing job because I'm on the stage now <laughs> instead of the seats. My involvement began after that luncheon. I joined the finance committee and after some time joined the board. I'm proud to say that starting this summer, I'll be serving as our finance committee chair and treasurer. As such, I can confidently vouch that the Family Partnership uses your donations prudently. It's a privilege to be a part of this organization. It's a privilege to hear stories like the ones we've heard today about how we are making a meaningful difference in the lives of our community. What we do together today impacts our collective tomorrow, and that excites me. Now I'm going to turn my and your attention to the practicalities of this moment. Table hosts, if you've not already started this, please hand out the envelopes to your guests at your table. Guests, before you open your envelopes, or if you have, please take a minute to listen to this section of my speech. First and foremost, the family partnership is interested in entering into a long-term relationship with you. For some of you who are new to the family partnership's work, that will mean simply entering in your email. That will allow the organization to share more in-depth information about the work that you've gotten a glimpse of today. They promise me that they will not overwhelm you with emails. That said, this is the Family Partnership's annual fundraiser. For those of you who are in a position to do so, please consider making a donation today. And there's an exciting twist to that. There's a group of next generation individuals that want to encourage you to enter into a long-term relationship with the Family Partnership. So, if you become a monthly donor today, or become a champion by making multi-year pledge of $1,000 or more, your gift will be doubled, up to $50,000. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, in a continuation of our discussion over lunch, we encourage you to share your passion, thought, and ideas about the family partnership, their work on the back of the document. Please consider filling that out so we can take time to follow up with you. And please take your time. Once you've completed that document, please seal it and return it to your table hosts. It excites me what we're able to do when we're given the opportunity to build better futures together. The Family Partnership wants to be here for the Minneapolis of today and the Minneapolis of tomorrow. The Family Partnership understands the importance of having someone in their lives. Thank you, Diego. I don't know about you all, but I love that enthusiasm. That $50,000 sent him up, boy. He's like, $50,000! That's right. You get a car. You get a... Never mind. Forget I said that. Through it all, whether you make your donation this afternoon or you take an envelope home with you, which we hope that you certainly consider and will do, that you can share that envelope with a friend. 
The one thing that we can count on is knowing that the family partnership is there when you need someone, is there when you need someone to lean on. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there is always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on, but it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. I'm Maria Davidsmeyer, outpatient therapist. When the world is overwhelming and you need someone to lean on, I'm here. I create a safe space for you and your family to talk about difficult topics and what you're going through to empower you to create a better future. Please swallow your pride if I have faith. Kamara, parenting educator. I'm here when parents and caregivers need a helping hand to rebuild a healthy relationship with their children and, and offer parenting tools to support their child's development. I advocate for parents and we work together. This call the problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. If there is a load you have to bear that you can't carry, I'm right up the road. I'll share your load if you just. Me llamo Juan Cordero. When you call the family partnership, you talk to me. In español and in English. When you have a problem, I listen. And I help to find services that will be useful for you, like early education, pride, mental health, or family support. We understand. I just might have a problem that you understand. Mr. Thomas West. I want to thank those amazing members of the team at the Family Partnership. Weren't they great? Juan, Maria, and Yasa. 
they had initially planned on doing a dance piece for you. But in the interest of time, they chose to do their little excerpts. Now it's time to thank you for sharing your time with us. I believe in this organization. I do. I believe in their mission. I believe. Now, if you believe that every family's life matters, believe. If you believe we all are connected and share the responsibility to create a healthy community, take action. If you believe in the work of the family partnership to build better, brighter, stronger futures, take action. Well then, I'm going to close in just a moment, but I want to share with you something that's pretty nifty. We're early. I think Karen Smith deserves a big round of applause because we're early. I don't know how many of you all have been to these one hour luncheons and been like, dude, can you shut up? I got to get back to work. Well, if you are one of those people that needs me to be quiet and get back to work, you're welcome to take your leave at this point. If not, I'm going to close with another little A and B selection. And want to thank you. You know, earlier, uh, earlier we were listening to one of our amazing, amazing hosts. And she shared the importance of hope and how valuable hope is. And my great aunt used to say, heaven hope us. And we would laugh and smile and say, ooh, heaven hope us. But when we finally asked her why heaven hope us, she said, baby, you have to have hope if your help is ever going to come. There's something true about that. And it requires remembering the importance of believing. If you believe deep in your heart, you know that no one can change. The path that you must go Believe what you feel He know you're right Because The time will come around When you see it's yours Believe there's a reason to be. Believe that you can make time stand still. <laughs> and know from the moment you try, if you believe, then you'll be there. Right from the start, believe in the magic inside your heart. Believe all these things, not because, not because I told you to, told you to. If you believe in yourself. afternoon. It's one o'clock. Have a good day, everyone. Mr. Thomas West.